Today on Takiwe Weekly, I answered the question, do you really need a dedicated graphics card? And I explained how you can get yourself a better gaming machine with time. Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and if ever, ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or piece of horror stories, you can always email me at ask at tqaweekly.com, get on my website, tqaweekly.com, and join on the conversation of this specific episode, or use the contact form to get a hold of me directly. And of course, if you're going on blip.tv, YouTube, or anywhere else I post to every single week, the comments box is actually down below. And before I get into today's topic, that heart bleed vulnerability you've been seeing all over the news, all over the internet, does not affect my website. I'm on a GoDaddy account, and I'm going to be posting a link in the show notes of this episode so that you want to join in on the basically the more secure service that I've been using for many many years that does not have any vulnerability to this specific problem you can go through my website link through me that'll help out the show and that will actually help you stay more safe and if you don't believe me for those who don't know about this you can go to the SSLlabs.com website and just type in tqwayweekly.com and check it out. They actually test for that heart bleed bug. So getting into today's topic, do you really need a dedicated graphics card? And you'd be surprised by the answer. And for those who are going to be answering yes, I bet you are a AAA gamer, a Bitcoin miner, video editor, 3D artist, or someone who really needs to use the graphics card to process something exactly like me. I'm one of those who actually abuses the computer by doing higher end tasks. But this is not a common user phenomenon. This is what we call the power user phenomenon. For the common user, the answer is actually no. And I'll explain why. Most modern computing technologies from a few years ago were only using a CPU. We all know what those are. They're basically that little thing we plug into our boards into the socket. They were processing the images and because most people were still using Windows XP inside a 32-bit environment, we weren't able to allocate more than four gigs of RAM to the entire system that included the graphics card and we were getting less than par imagery from the onboard graphics device. This is why most of us give onboard graphics a bad rap but we have access to APUs. APUs stands for Accelerator, Accelerated Processing Unit. An APU has multiple CPUs and GPUs, graphics processing units, and graphics processing units are faster at processing images that allow us to get a better image out of our onboard video. So in turn, because we're using an APU as opposed to a CPU, we are getting better graphics out of the system. And if we are actually using a 64-bit operating system, we can actually allocate a lot more than four gigs of RAM to our system. So just going up to eight gigs of RAM allocates more than enough memory to most people's needs in the computer to give them the best crisp image they need for your tasks. So if you're ready to buy a brand new computer, what should you expect? Well, if you're on a budget and you don't want to waste your money, I work in a computer store, so I've built quite a few quotes, okay? Expect to get at least a medium tier processor because getting a lower tier processor will just give you that, a lower tier experience. Getting a medium tier processor gives you an extra benefit. So aim for an Intel i5 if you're a fan of Intel or an AMD FX6 core solution, which will be cheaper than the Intel just because of the name, both have six cores. And don't just buy four gigs of RAM because much of the memory may be allocated to that onboard graphics device and you can adjust this at will inside the brand new UEFIs. Get yourself eight gigs so that you'll have more memory towards your operating system and have a better experience out of your brand new APU having a little bit more RAM and a medium tier processor will give you a better experience out of your computer. Not getting the benefit yet? Well, building it in this way potentially saves you hundreds of dollars. A single GTX 760 from NVIDIA will cost you roughly $300. 
we're talking about a dedicated graphics card. It's a medium range card. The AMD FX processor, compatible motherboard, and eight gigs of RAM will cost you about the same price. And because you don't have a dedicated sound card, don't have a dedica dedicated graphics card, and you're probably going to be using a single hard drive, which probably only pulls 30 watts, you can get away with buying a smaller computer tower with a built-in 500 watt power supply, which means combined with your Windows license, expect to pay only five, six, maybe $700 for a machine that can go on Facebook and actually play last gen games and do many of the tasks you would expect to be able to do. Now, obviously, many of you only go this way because you want to upgrade your computer. At this point, you may want to actually give yourself the option of boosting your RAM up to 16, being able to get yourself an SSD if you want to lower the load times of your games, and on top of everything else, decide in which family you actually want to ride. If you're going to be going Intel, you can use the GTX 760 that I suggest because it is a medium tier graphics card and you will be able to play many of the AAA titles available this year on this kind of system. If you're an AMD fan, I have an extra surprise for you. Something that most people didn't know about an Nvidia Sly is it's not rated on every board. Not all boards are rated for Nvidia Sly since they have many more stringent rules about what can actually be played on the motherboards with their graphics cards. However, AMD is not as fussy, and they're so not as fussy that their crossfire actually passes through the PCI Express bus. This means that if you have an AMD ATI Radeon R9 260 or better, of course you can always get a lesser one, you can PCI Express crossfire to the APU from AMD and get a crossfire experience and get yourself mantle drivers to be able to play Battlefield 4 in a way that, you know, maybe the other one could probably play anyway, but you'll get a better experience out of it at the end of the day. So basically speaking, you can go full on Intel with Nvidia, or you can go AMD, get yourself an ATI card, use the Crossfire through the PCI Express bus with the processor that you already bought and get yourself a slightly better computer that can actually be overclocked higher than an Intel machine could. And the starting price for those kinds of computer go from $700 to $1,200 for the entire thing, including the Windows license. Obviously, the price is subject to change to the location. And these computers do play AAA titles once you upgrade them. But you do not need a dedicated graphics card for a computer meant specifically for last gen games, word processing, Facebook, and playing on the internet, anything you want. So for those that actually want to share this episode for other people to actually learn about the fact that they don't actually need to spend as much money as they thought, go ahead, share my episode, like this episode. If you didn't already subscribe, subscribe now. And for those who want to join on the conversation, go to tqaweekly.com slash se4ep30. That'll bring you to this specific show notes where at the bottom, you can converse with other people on this specific topic. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.